deal with some things that attempt to keep us out of the spirit. I want to deal with the one thing that attempts to keep us out of the spirit. That is the flesh. That is the flesh. It's amazing that Marcus began to deal with the flesh um, as he was singing. Um, I'm, I'm going to take you to Romans chapter 7, and I'm going to start at verse number 15 in the New Living Translation. This is, this is, you can't find, I don't think, a greater set of chapters on flesh and spirit in the entirety of the Bible. I don't think there is any other theological perspective on, on, on the answer between flesh and spirit. It would have to be between Romans 7, 8, 9, 10, and 11, and Galatians 3, 4, 5, and 6. Both were written by Paul. He deals with the flesh lusting against the spirit, the spirit lusting against the flesh, in the flesh and in the spirit, because he understands how important it is for us to live in the promises of God. Amen. See, our purpose is to lay hands on the sick and they recover, but we can't do that without a promise. Our purpose is to cast out devils, but we can't do that without a promise. Our purpose is to prosper, but we can't do that without a promise. He wants to give us the promises, therefore we can fulfill our purposes. Amen. And so... Romans chapter 7, verse number 15. I'm doing the New Living Translation. He's now dealing with the issue of the flesh. And he's dealing, the issue of the flesh is the individual who has been born again of the Spirit, but not filled with the Spirit. The flesh's biggest issue is the one who's been born of the Spirit, but not filled with the Spirit. When we're born of the Spirit, that means our spirit can interact with God. Amen. Amen. Adam, the day you eat of this fruit, you shall surely do what? He lived for over 800 years after that. But he died. His spirit died. The part of him that can interact with God who was spirit. He was dead for 800 years. In other words, he could not interact with God. When a man is born again, it's called regeneration. He not, his spirit is made alive and he can now hear God again. He can be touched by God again. Amen. He, he, can, he, can, he can hear God's voice again. But being born of the Spirit and being filled with the Spirit are two different things. When I'm born of the Spirit, I can interact with God. When I'm filled with the Spirit, I'm led by God. Those who are led by the Spirit of God are the Son. See, because I'm born again don't make me a son. It makes me a child. I'm still a child. And anybody know anything about the Spirit of Herod? Everything to and under is going to get killed. I wish I could talk about immaturity and the price it costs. There's a spirit of Herod still out there that's trying to keep us to and below because he knows eventually we'll be cut off. And so we'll come out of Egypt just to die in the wilderness. Never get the promise. Everybody following what I'm saying? And so to be filled, I'm talking about now the flesh is the issue. Now, the flesh will always be there. It'll always be a reality. It'll never stop being a reality that we deal with. But the flesh is an issue of the one born of the Spirit, but not filled with the Spirit. Therefore, not being able to be led by the Spirit. The right. Romans chapter 7, verse number 15. I'm going to start there. New Living Translation. I don't really understand myself. This is Paul talking about himself in a condition called flesh. For I want to do what is right, but I don't do it. Instead, I do what I hate. Verse 16, but if I know what I'm doing is wrong, this shows that I agree that the law is good. Verse 17, so I am not the one doing wrong. Listen to this. It is sin living in me that does it. Romans 7, verse number 18. And I know that nothing good lives in me. Not me. Let me. Then he has to correct that. That is in my sinful nature. In other words, my flesh. I want to do what is right, but I can't. I want to do what is good, but I don't. I don't want to do what is wrong, but I do it anyway. Verse 20. But if I do what I don't want to do, I am not really the one doing wrong. It is sin living in me that does it. <sighs> Father, I thank you. And I, I, I wonder if that's it. <sighs> Father, I thank you. And I bless you right now. 
you send the power of the helper today. Oh, glory to God. I thank you that you transition us today. Move us into a dimension of spirit we've never lived in in our lives. And we'll bless you for it right now in the name of Jesus. Amen. Now listen to this. You may be seated. Man, glory to God. Listen to Paul's words. And then I'm, I hope you can track me in this. Listen to Paul's words. Two things he says. He says, so I am not the one doing wrong. It is sin living in me that does it. Now, I'm not trying to give nobody a pass for doing wrong with this. This isn't the agenda of this, so don't think that, that. We all going to do wrong, and I'm just going to give you a pass because it ain't really me. I, no, I ain't, I'm not saying that. Just follow me. He says in another statement, but if I do what I don't want to do, I am not really the one doing wrong. It is sin living in me that does it. I need y'all to follow this. What Paul is actually saying, Pastor Francina, is when I know right, but yet I do wrong, there's something in me that's actually not me exercising that wrong. There's... When I know right and do wrong, he's saying there's something in me that's actually not me, but it's in me. Uh-huh. <sighs> Acting out itself in me, but it really ain't me because I know better. Yeah. God, I am not the one doing wrong. It is sin that has taken residence. Oh, I'm trying to help you understand something. I mean, my question to you all is this. What if there's something in me that's not me, and as long as I'm in what's in me that's not me, I don't do what I want to do, but I, I do what someone else inside of me that's not me wants to do. I'm going to read that again. What if as long as I'm in what's in me that's not me, I don't do what I want to do, but what the someone else inside of me that's not me wants me to do. To be in our flesh is to be in something in us that's not us. It's not me, glory. It's sin living in me. To be in something in us that's not us, which operates independent of us. It's being in something in us that's not us with an independent perspective, independent emotions, and independent feelings that cause us to see things in ways we don't want to see things, to feel ways we don't want to feel, and to go through emotions we don't want to go through. That close Glory be to God, because it's not actually me, but it's something else that's taken residence in me. Flesh is the inability to control our inward condition and or rule over our inward state. I'm about to go somewhere right now. Flesh is the inability to control our inward climate. It is the inability to rule over our emotions. It is the inability to rule over our own feelings. I don't want to feel this way, but I still feel that way. I don't want to go through this, but I still go through that. I don't want to be mad, but I am mad. I want to forgive him, but I can't. I don't want to be offended, but I am. That's flesh. It's not me because I know I don't want to. Flesh is the inability to control our inward condition or rule over our inward state. When we're in our flesh, there are things that go on inwardly that we have no control of. Come on, when we're in our flesh, we can feel hopeless and we don't want to feel hopeless. I want to I, I want to believe God, but I feel hopeless and I don't want to feel hopeless because why? I'm inside of something that uh, there's something in me that I'm in that's not me. And although in my mind I'm saying the hope is the Lord is my strength, I still feel somewhere in here hopeless. It is no longer I, but it's something in s- and overwhelmed and we don't want to feel stressed and overwhelmed that means there's something else in me that's not me that I'm in 
that's expressing himself through me, and it really ain't me. And I wind up saying, I'm struggling me, me, me. This is me. And it never was me. It's flesh. It is, it's because I haven't come out of my flesh. And therefore, I am living out the emotions of an enemy. I am living out the perspectives of an enemy. I, I don't even want to hate that person. I don't want to feel like giving up. But I still feel like giving up. And I still can't stand them when I see them. It is no longer I that do it that. Because I don't want to do that. I don't want want to be like that but I'm in some, something is in me that's not me that's causing me not to act like me because to be in our flesh is to be in something in me that's not me come on to be in our flesh is to be in something in me that's not me. Listen to Romans 7 and 20. I want to help somebody today because I want you to understand who you really are. And you better stop claiming characteristics of something in you that ain't you. That's not you. Romans 7 and 20 says, but if I do what I don't want to do, I am not really the one doing wrong. It is sin living in me that does it. You know what the good news in that is, Dwayne? If you're battling with fear, it isn't you. <laughs> Glory be to God. You know the good news of that? If you're fighting with hopelessness, guess what? It isn't you. If you feel like giving up and you don't want to feel like giving up, guess what? It isn't you. Can I give you some good news right now? You're not a quitter. Can I give you some good news right now? You're not a failure. Can I give you some good news right now? You're not a mess up. You're not the one who just keeps on messing up your opportunities. You're not just one who struggles with sin. You're not a sinner. Can I give you some good news? That's something else in in you that's not you that's acting out itself inside of you and the flesh the spirit is willing y'all ain't hear me but the flesh is weak the devil's trying to keep you in the weak part of who you are that ain't really who you are but if you just get in the spirit you're willing to live holy if you just get in the spirit you're willing to pray if you just get in the spirit you're willing to humble yourself if you just get in the spirit you're willing to trust God that's who you really are. There's something in you that's not you that as you begin to come out of what's in you that's not you, you can actually be yourself. <laughs> Glory be to God. You know what yourself is? Peace. You know what yourself is? Joy. You know what yourself is? Righteousness. You know what yourself is? Encourage. You know what yourself is? Conqueror. You know what yourself is? Authority. You know what yourself is? Anointed. You... Look at me tell you, I'm gonna start being myself because this ain't me. My God, I'm not a stressor. This ain't me. My God, I don't fight with giving up every week. This ain't me. The good news is, you don't have to do what you don't want to do. I'm a, I'll run around this church. You don't have to do. You don't want to ever feel depressed. You don't never have to. You're, you don't have to do, Chloe, what you don't want to do. You don't ever want to feel like giving up again. You don't have to. You don't ever want to feel weak again. You don't have to. You don't ever want to feel overwhelmed again. You don't have to. Because it's not you any. I don't know about you. That's good news. That's good news. Because in the spirit, we're willing. Willing to endure. Willing to die. Willing to struggle. Willing to suffer. Willing to be persecuted. Willing to wait. Willing to be patient. Whatever it is, I already know I'm willing. I don't know what God is going to ask me to do tomorrow, but I already know. That send me, I'll go. I already know I'm willing. Because I'm going to walk in the... How do you keep moving? I'm willing. You don't have to sin if you don't want to sin. You don't have to sin if you don't want to sin no more. That's not what? That's not actually you. 
But it's sin that's what? But if we as a people, if we're going to do that, we must embrace no longer living in something that's living in us that's not us. We must embrace coming out of living in something. I know it's in you, but it ain't you. But I feel this. No, you don't. He feels that. But I don't like this. No, you, you ain't got a problem with it. He don't like that. But I feel like quitting. No, you don't. He feel like quitting. You got to come out of allowing someone else to export their identity to you because you felt it inside you. Everything inside you ain't didn't come. From. There's some can I, news flash. Everything in you ain't. There's some foreign stuff. Well, I feel it, so I got to be legitimate. No, I don't. I feel like quitting, so I fight with quitting. You lying on yourself. There's only one that feels like quitting. That's the devil. Because he already, he's the only one that already know he lost. I just feel like I can't make it. You're feeling like him because he already know he lost. He's the only one that knows he ain't going to make it. I'm mad. No, you ain't. Something in you that's not you is mad. I'm scared to step out. No, you ain't. There's something in you that's scared. The, the devil is scared. Do you understand that fear is his greatest characteristic? That's why to be in fear has so, causes so many problems and brings you into bondage. The devil is scared. Jesus shows up in demons that he ain't even pointed out. Say, oh man, are you here to cast us into the lake of fire before the time? They're scared. The devil's so scared, he don't want to go. He will not face men. He actually tried to go to Eve. Man, I ain't even trying. Adam, I already know what time it is. He's fearful. And any time we feel fear, there's something in me that's not me that I need to come out of because I'm not fearful. My God, I, grew up, I, now I am fearfully and wonderfully made, and I do fear God, but I'm... But I'm not fearful. Romans 7 and 20 NLT, it says, but if I do what I don't want to do, I am not really the one doing wrong. It is sin living in me that does it. I got an occupant that I keep on living out of that ain't, that's in me that ain't me. Now look at this, Romans 7 and 18, New King James Version. For I know that in me, that is what? I know that in me, that is in my flesh, nothing good dwells. As long as we're in the flesh, we'll never see things as good. I'm trying to help you understand something. We're, we're cut off from a lens called good, and it's replaced with a lens called evil or wrong. We cannot see good when we're in our flesh. For I know that's in me, that is in my flesh, dwells no good thing. Do you understand that evil is a lens, and good is a lens? That people with a lens called good will look at something and say that's good, and somebody with a lens called evil will look at the very same thing and said that's evil and full of the devil it just it just depends on how you see flesh won't allow us to see anything as good but will magnify our ability to notice and see what is wrong and evil and if we're in our flesh the reason why we're so worn out the reason why we're so stressed out the reason why we're so frustrated and ready to be done is because in our flesh dwells no good thing so 
in my mind when I look at my marriage the wrong is magnified in my mind when I look at my job the wrong is magnified in my mind when I look at my ministry the wrong is magnified in my mind when I look at my brother and sister the wrong is magnified and I can't look at that much wrong and not be worn out by what I see because my flesh won't let me see anything but evil and wrong Constantly seeing evil and wrong wears you out. You'll get an opportunity and all you can do is say all the reasons why you can't do it. Right. Well, since I got in the business, I realized that some people just can't see. Right. All they can do is come up with a 20 reasons. Why well, I can't do that. That ain't me. I can't do that. I can't do this. I, I got one reason to say that you can. Right. And it's not, a, it's not a concept. It's a man. How you see it is how you have it. What controls the eyes of your mind controls the future that you enter into. The enemy wants the mind. The enemy wants the mind. That's why Jesus said, I'm the head. Because I, if I can just get your head... The devil will have to come under your feet. See, the reason why I can crush Satan under your feet is because I'm your head. If I could just get your head together. We're trying to figure out somewhere for our feet to go when it's actually just getting our head right. Romans chapter 7 verse 22 and 23. New King James Version. Listen to what he says. For I delight in the law of God according to the inward man. Verse 23. But I see another law in my members. Warring against the law of my, everybody say mind. And bringing me into what? That's a strong verse. I'm going to read it one more time. But I see another law. Because I agree that the law of God is good. But I see another law in my members. Warring against the law of my mind. And bringing me into captivity. To the law of sin which is in my members. Verse 25. Romans 7 to 25. I thank God. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. So then with the mind I myself. Watch this. Serve the law of God. But with the flesh the law of sin. At the same time with the mind I saw I serve the law of God but in my flesh I serve the law of sin at the same time flesh serves the law of sin what is the law of sin I need y'all to get this today the law of sin is not being able to inwardly stop or suppress ways that you feel within yourself that you know is wrong within your mind. I know I shouldn't feel that way in my mind, but I feel that way in my body. You're under a law called sin. I know I shouldn't, I shouldn't be mad like that in my mind, but I'm mad like that in my body. That's the law of sin. My mind is under one law, but my body is under another. Kind of changes the whole thing about who are the sinners. It ain't so easy just to say if you're drinking, you're going to hell. Perhaps sin is deeper than that. Perhaps there are more believers, there are more people that come to church every week in sin. With the mind, I serve the law of God. But with the flesh, my body, the law of sin. As long as we're in the flesh, we are under the law of sin to be in inward conditions in our body that we completely disagree with with our mind. I know I shouldn't have talked to him like that in my mind, but I talk to him like that with my body. I know I shouldn't have acted like that with my mind, but I acted like that with my body. I know I shouldn't want to quit with my mind, but I want to quit. You're under a law. That's the law of sin. 
That's the law of sin. In the flesh, we'll go places inwardly that we know we shouldn't go and don't want to go, but have to get this by law. When we in our flesh and we're feeling some type of way, we're actually feeling some type of way because we are following the law. And if we weren't feeling some type of way in our flesh, we would be lawbreakers. When I'm in my flesh and I feel like giving up, I'm actually following the law. My God, if I don't feel like giving up, that's the breaking of the law. It is the law. De depression is by law. Feeling like giving up is by law. Hopelessness is by law. Uh, uh, temper is by law. As long as we're in that flesh, we got to follow that law just like we got to follow the law of gravity. You can know people who are going to want to give up again because they can't break the law. You're in your flesh. It's just a matter of time. You could try to hide it, but at the end of the day, there's no way around it. In your flesh, you just got to follow the law, and the law says you're going to be depressed again. The law says you're going to want to give up again. The law says you're going to mess up again. The law says you're going to go back into sin. The law says you're going to backslide. You can't get beyond that. No, oh, yes, I can. I can just willpower you. How many times have you tried to use willpower? How many times have you tried to feel better? How many times did you go two weeks? How many times did you go three months? It don't matter. You got to follow the law. The only way out is out of our flesh. Gravity is a law. Well, I don't believe it. Go jump off this building. See if you follow that law. You ain't got to agree with it. It don't matter. Law is law. I don't believe in the law of gravity. Sure. All right. Humpty Dumpty sat on the wall. <laughs> Humpty Dumpty had a great fall. And then all the king's horses and all the king's men. That's what's happening to people. We, we're steady trying to put people back together that's going to keep on breaking their self. I'm trying to make a point. It don't matter how many times I put you back together. If you don't come out of your flesh, you... Help me get it together. But if I do and don't deal with your flesh, two months from now, I'm going to have to put you back together. And we're running out of tape. We're running out of glue. We're running out of stitches. I ain't, I'm fresh out of ideas. The flesh is unfixable. flesh the flesh is unfixable but the spirit is unbreakable I found something over these last four and five years I figured out that there's a place where I'm unbreakable I found out that there's a place where I'm unstoppable I found out there's a place where I'm more than a conqueror I found out there's a place can I say it like this I found out there's a place where we're unbreakable I found out that there's a place where we're unstoppable and I am set to bro we're going there I'm going to lead you into this that. I'm putting up the stitches. I'm putting up the tape. I'm putting up the glue. If you break good, suffer in your flesh so you can learn how to walk it. Every day is good in the spirit. I want to praise God every day in the spirit. Joy unspeakable every day in the spirit. Hunger and thirst every day in the spirit. Why am I hungry? You're not in spirit. How do I know if I'm in spirit of flesh? All you got to do is check on how willing you are. How willing you are to humble yourself. How willing you are to submit. How willing you are to turn. How, how willing are you? If I'm fighting with what I know is right, I'm in the flesh. Because that's when I know good, but I fight with still doing bad. 
You don't fight when you, when you know it's right. In the spirit. Watch this. It says here. Let me see this. Romans 7 verse 25. I'm a, we, we're there now. Watch this. So let me take this off. I thought I was going to keep it on. But it ain't nothing happening, Captain. I said, Thank you. Romans chapter 7, verse 25, the New Living Translation. I'm going to read it again. It says, so then with the mind, everybody say mind. mind. I myself serve the law of God, but with the flesh, the law of sin. Do you understand that the flesh is also called the body of death in Romans 7 and 24? Yeah. Read it. The, the verse above verse 25, flesh is called the body of death. Being in our flesh is being in a body of death. Everybody say body of death. Body of death. death. Come on. This is a Greek word we just learned. Thanatos. For all of you all that have been following and studying, the Greek word for death is thanatos. And it actually means separation. Everybody say separation. separation. The law of God with my mind, but the law of sin with my flesh brings me into the body of death and death now is separation we are in a state of death when we can't do when we can't do with our body what we know is right with our mind our mind and our body are separate there's a separation between mind and body therefore in actuality we are in a state of death i ain't dead because i praise god no i ain't, ain't got nothing to do with that death is separation death is when my mind and my body are not in agreement or are two separate entities. Our inner self does one thing while our mind does another. My mind does one thing while my emotions do another. My mind does one thing while my attitude does another. That is death. That is separation. You know why that separation? When someone dies, what happens? Separation. Glory be to God. We'll never, it don't matter, not separation physically. We can see their physical body, but their soul is separated from their body, which causes them to be separated in communication with us. Once they're dead, we could have been married for 50 years, and I'll never talk to you again, not on this side, because we've been separated because when you're separated we're because when you're separated we're separate because when you're separated you know we have a such time you know hard time unifying in the church you know why we're so separate and we have to work through so many things to actually get along because how you gonna unite with me and all of you ain't united how you gonna how you gonna come in oneness with me and you ain't one your mind over here your body over here your feelings over here and then you try to come in here and say can't we all get along me and you you can't get along with your mind you can't get along with your f you. unity starts in here we can't be one with nobody out here marriages Marriages aren't failing because people can't get along with each other. They can't get along with themselves. I'm mad, but you're mad at you. I just don't like when people do that. Well, that's what you don't like. It just take me somewhere. Well, it just took you somewhere. <laughs> Why are you blaming me for your bondage? I didn't make you do that. Our inner condition is never what we're, what's in front of us. It's what's in us. Where do wars come from? They do not come from what's around us. You mad because something is... Are you trying to blame me for it? No. I won't buy it. 
I ain't taking the blame for that. No. I ain't mad. <laughs> it's it, 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 what you did. No, it's how you responded. Stop blaming that on somebody else. That stuff going on in I really want to do some other stuff. I promise I'm about to back up. I tend to get myself in trouble. My gosh. It's just be so many things popping up. And I said, no, I ain't going to do it. We'll go wait till we go further down the road. Amen. The death is separation. We are in a state of death when we can't do with our body what we know is right with our mind. Without realizing it, many in the church are still dead. We have a church full of people who are yet to come alive. Because when you come alive, my God, I'm t- man, I'm t- when your feelings can stay where you want them to all the time, when your emotions can stay where you want them to all the time, when your outlook on life can stay where you want it to all the time, where the devil being busy ain't greater than the God that already defeated him, when you come alive, I don't care how busy he is. It is finished. I don't care how he's working. The work is already done. When we become one, we come alive. He said, if your eye is single, if your eye, if, if my mind's eye, my body's eye, and my spirits are are all one eye if your mind if your eye is single then your whole body shall be full of light well let me rewind that John can you help me out for God is light and in him is no darkness at all so when my eye is single my body is full of God yeah that's coming alive that's being filled with the spirit that's living in living life more abundantly what are you full of God what happens when there's a church that you come into and everybody's full of God you you ain't full of it you ain't full of mess you ain't full of lies you ain't full of anger you full of lights my God all that happens is a light show I look over there and angels are dancing I look over there and power's falling I look over there and glory's moving I'm in a light show right now because everybody's come alive Awake and arise from the dead. And Christ shall give you. We, me and you are as alive as we are one within ourselves. We are as alive as we are one within ourselves. We are as alive as we are one. Oh, that they would be one. And our promise is, our problem is we skip us and get the people. The church need to be one, but you ain't. Wake up talking about it's just one of them days. Do you want it to be one of them days? No. Well, you ain't one. Wake up talking about I just feel some type of way. Do you want to feel that way? No. Well, you ain't one. I'm never going to accept feeling some way I don't want to feel. Not accept. I control this. I have dominion over this. I'm always going to feel like praying. Sometimes you don't feel like praying. Well, you ain't one. Because the Bible says pray without ceasing. Pray in the spirit. We're trying to be one with each other and ain't even one within ourselves. 
He's talking about John 17, the prayer of oneness, is that they would be one as we are one. I in you. And he's not talking about them having now a unified effort, but them being in unity within themselves. God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. Three persons in one. Mind, body, soul, slash spirit. Three persons in one. We are three perks. I want them to be one as we are. That although the sun is in earth, he's still in heaven. Because we're one. So it don't matter where you put the sun, the father is still in heaven who he's one with. It don't matter where you put the man, the spirit is still... Enjoy the sp- the spirit is still. In- I'm one. I'm one. We'll work on that one. That one didn't go over well. <laughs> you know how sometimes people are like yeah and they ain't really get it. So I already know I'm gonna have to work on that one. Yeah. I'll come back. Glory to God. All right. Bless the Lord. Romans chapter 7, verse number 24. Look at this. Romans chapter 7, verse 24. Watch this. O wretched man that I am, who shall deliver me from the body of this death? Paul says, man, I'm trapped. I'm trapped right now. I don't want to feel this way, but I still feel this way. I don't want to go here within myself, but I still want to go up here. Who is going to deliver me? And then he, 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 he comes to the epiphany, but thanks be unto God. Yeah, 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 yeah. I don't care how bad off you are. I don't care how dead you are. I don't care how separate you are, but thanks be to God. Yeah, is there anybody in here that has a but thanks be to God? It don't matter how messed up I am, but thanks be to God. It don't matter how dead I am, but thanks be to God. That's why we say thank you. Because I ain't where I need to be, but thanks be to God. I ain't been doing what I need to do, but what you mean I'm having problems praising him? But thanks be to God. I can still lift my hands and feel him as dead as I've been acting. I can pray and he'll answer as dead as I've been acting. But thanks be to God. We ain't coming in here and playing. When D-R-R-F-F get together, we're turning over chairs. We swinging on chandeliers. We jumping across stages. We twisting and we dancing. Because we got a but thanks be to God. I ain't here preaching because I ain't never been in my flesh. I'm up here preaching because I got whooped in my flesh. I I suffered in my flesh. I I went through in my flesh until God brought me out of my flesh. But thanks be to God. He answers the question. Watch this. He answers the question. He says in Romans 8 and 20, 8 and 2, he says there's a law of sin and death. And he, but he gives another but for the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus has made me free from the law of sin and death. But the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus has made me free from the law of sin and death. I'm going to say that one more time. But the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus has made me free from the law of sin and the law of death. Just like in my flesh, there is a law of sin and death. There is a law of life. 
in the spirit. In the spirit, by law, we can't feel overwhelmed. Feeling overwhelmed would be me breaking the law. In the spirit, there's a law. We can't come under the authority of hopelessness. I can't be hopeless by law, man. I can't feel like throwing in the towel by law. If I felt like throwing in the towel, I'd be breaking the law of the spirit of life. If I felt like quitting, I'd be breaking the law of the spirit of life. If I felt like going back, I'd be breaking the law of spirit of life. If I felt fear and succumb to it, I'd be breaking the law. I need somebody to say, I got to praise him because I can't break the law. My God, I got to clap because I can't break the law. I got rebel shanyata. I'm walking in joy because I can't break the law. The law, the spirit of life. <laughs> can you feel that? Because that's a law. Come on, can you feel that? That's a law. That is not getting from one place to another. That's going from one realm to another. <laughs> I just want to help somebody that feels like you got to do something after you leave here and you can't actually go there right now. I want to help you understand that our king does not transition us. He translates us oh, to the kingdom of light. For we have been translated out of the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of our dear son. I just want you to translate tonight. You do not need to move. You're already there. You do not need to go. You're already there. Come on. It is somebody shout translation no I'm in that law right now I'm under the law of life right now I came here dead but I'm going to leave here living I don't know about you but the tomb is empty My, I came here dead but I'm going to leave living because the tomb Translation. Somebody say translated. I want, to, I want to drop this last piece to you. Kanda ba reba shutod nida. Reba shande rebo kon sandai. Seda bande bade baba koman sande. Rinanda Raman Sata. I want you to understand something. We're translated now, but we're taught to live in. See, you can be translated and you can you can actually stray back into flesh. See, you got it now, but most of us may not. I ain't gonna say most of us will, but most of us may not maintain it because we don't know how to. That's the key. The key is and when God do, He does it in a moment. He does it in a twinkling, but our problem is we don't know how to steward what he did in a moment, and then we say we ended up back where we were and wonder if anything ever changed. Some of you have actually even questioned, did God even change me? Did he ever move in me? And he did it at the moment. But we got to learn how to steward that. You've been translated, but how do you steward that? How do I stu walking in the spirit is not something you going to do haphazardly. There has to be some intentionality to your life. There has to be a purposeful focus on you. You're not going to walk in the spirit by accident after you finally finish watching all your soap operas and finish texting all your friends on Facebook. You ain't going to walk in the spirit. It don't work like that. You got it now. But some of us will give it up before we leave the foyer. Because we don't understand that God gives us talents, but he don't tell us how to use them. And many times we wind up burying them because we see more people burying them than actually multiplying them.
Watch this. Now watch this. In order, this is the part that demands the stewardship. This is why you don't question what's about to happen after this moment. You know what's about to happen after this moment. You know what this year was about. It was about suffering. You know what's going to break out in some of your lives after we leave here? All hell. You know why? Because it demands suffering to steward a walk in the spirit. And the moment we feel a breakthrough in God, the first thing we say is, and then all hell broke loose. And we wonder why and don't understand. Because he's trying to keep you where he brought you. And it's through suffering that we enter the... In order to enter into the realm of spirit where we never feel like quitting, we have to go through situations in our flesh where we feel like quitting. In order to live in the law of the spirit of life where we no longer feel overwhelmed, we have to go through things in our flesh where we feel overwhelmed. Guess what's happening after this? Suffering. You ain't going to stay there without suffering. Because most times we don't know when we're in our flesh. Because we you can use scriptures when we're in our flesh. And we can pray when we're in our flesh. First Peter 4 and 1. First Peter 4 and 1. Look at this scripture, it's so powerful. For as much then as Christ has suffered for us in the arm yourselves likewise with the same mind. For he that has suffered in the flesh has ceased from sin. Only through suffering in our flesh do we learn how to stop living in our flesh flesh and sinning in our flesh. What you mean? I ain't no sinner. Did you do something you didn't feel like it? You sinned. Were you mad and you didn't want to be mad? You sinned. I ain't no sinner. Were you separated? Are you dead or living? The only thing that are separated is the stuff that's dead. God ain't separated. Amen. Amen. Listen to me. There is a reason why that thief said to Jesus right before he died, remember me while he was suffering. He was suffering and he told Jesus, remember me when you enter into your kingdom. Come on, not remember me in memory, but remember me in body. Put me back together. If I'm suffering like this, if I'm being crucified, if I'm suffering, God remember me. Let my mind and my body and my spirit be remembered and put back together. While you're suffering, say, God, remember me. My God, I'm telling you, in the next few weeks, you're going to go through some stuff. But don't you dare say, God, get me out of this. No, 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 remember me. Don't you dare say, turn it to God. No, 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 remember me. Put me back together. I want my mind. I'm telling you, when you're one, you're unstoppable. Stuff that ain't supposed to work will work. People that are supposed to tell you no have to tell you yes. Places you ain't supposed to be, you end up being. Because you're one. You're about to go some places you don't deserve to go. And you're about to get some stuff you don't deserve to get. And you're about to articulate knowledge that you don't even know. God is about to, God is so filling some of you right now. I'm telling you over the next three weeks, you're going to talk to people that you didn't talk to before. And you're going to say things that you didn't even know was in your belly. God is about to give you a, a, a fresh a wisdom of a, an articulation. 
And he's going to open doors for you to influence people you didn't think you qualified to influence. And the moment you get there, don't you dare say, now, God, let me figure out what I need to say to these people. You didn't know what you said that got you there. The reason why we can't maintain favor is because the moment we get it, we start trying to use works to maintain it. I didn't get this church because I'm smart. I got it because I'm favored. I didn't work for it. God worked it out for me. And guess what? I'm a proud son. <laughs> Glory be to God. I don't care if I don't know as much as you. I don't care if I couldn't figure out as much as you. I don't care if I can't budget more than you. I got it. And he I would rather have daddy give it than me earn it any day. The devil wants us to do something and poke our chest out. But God wants to elevate us and then cause us to put our head down. I know this ain't it. I know this ain't it. It's not going to be too long before there's two or three other churches that's going to be joining us. Well, we got to put in place a growth plan. For, no, we don't. We got to figure out how we're going to say, no, we don't. Walk in the spirit. And whatever we need to do, he'll tell us. We'll do it right when we need to do it. If you want to walk with God, you can't have a plan from A to Z. Right? Oh, God, if I do this now, you got to promise me, then this going to happen, this going to happen, this going to happen, this going to happen. Before you got to the third, this going to happen, he didn't already went to somebody else and said, man, he don't want to do that. He don't work like that. He don't work like that. You got to, he orders steps, not thoughts. And we want to think our way through something instead of walk our way through something. See, when you're just born of the Spirit, he'll open it up before you cross. That's the Red Sea. It spoke of them being born of the Spirit, being able to interact with God. They were crossing that Red Sea so they could meet God. Being delivered doesn't mean you know God. They didn't know him by being delivered. He brought them out and they didn't know who he was. They weren't going to meet him into Horeb, Mount Horeb. I know God because when I was sick, you being sick and him healing, you don't mean you know him. He delivered three million people without them knowing him. They were going to meet him after they came out. See, we really can't meet God until we ain't bound. Because in his presence ain't nothing but freedom. When they cross the Red Sea, God parts it completely, shows them dry ground, and they cross over. But 40 years on the backside of that, they have to cross another river called the Jordan. And this time it's for the promise. And the Bible says that there were no partings, the, that that Jordan was not parted before they crossed. As they stepped, water parted. And it only parted where they stepped. If they don't take another set step, they don't see a way. So they got to take another step and then the water parted. And it stopped where they stepped. And if they going to see, see, some of us are waiting for God to open up the way. That's for babies. That's for folks who just came out of Egypt. You done been through 40 years of hell in your flesh. It's about time for you to learn how to step. Trust your God. Sin at the core isn't an act. Sin is actually a nature within. We're trying to fix actions, and actions aren't really sin. God is not after the actions. He's after the nature. That's why, by the law, we can't be justified, because we can't rule over our inner man by rules. 
I don't care how many rules you give your inner man, your inner man can't be ruled over by rules. You got to forgive everybody. You can know that as a rule and still not forgive folk. Because rules cannot give us authority to rule over our inner man. That's why we needed something besides the law. Because it can never really free us the way God wants. God didn't want to change our actions. He wanted to give us a new nature. The spirit is a new nature. It ain't training the dog in us. And our problem is we want somebody to teach us how to train the dog. How do we get along in our marriage? Then the two shall become one flesh. Well, tell me three, ten steps to do that. Ain't no steps. Your way ain't going to be just like my way. What did y'all do? And then you try to do them five steps and y'all still ready to slap each other. Hello? <laughs> no steps. The spirit. It's getting out of your flesh. You wouldn't have such a problem if you weren't in your flesh trying to deal with your marriage. Mortify your flesh. Amen. How do I know what I need to kill? The stuff that I walk away from and I'm mad. If when you and your spouse talked, you leave thinking about it at work and how mad you is and how you can't talk to them, you did it wrong. Well, they were wrong. No, you did it wrong. You the one bound. That means your conscience was convicted by God's spirit because God's spirit was sitting there saying, say it in this tonation and say it like this. But you got in your flesh and you said it in that tonation and you said it like that. And now the spirit whooping your behind. Talking about they just get me so mad. No, you're carnal. And we don't want that. Do you want to be free? I don't want nobody to tell. Don't tell me. I'm carnal. I know how to bless God. I know how to pray. You speaking in all them tongues carnally. Backed up, jacked up, tied up, wrestling, all tight on the inside. Just on edge. Talking about what somebody else messed up. They just, oh, oh. They just, oh. You the one. Look at you talking about, ugh. <laughs> Blaming them for your bondage. Ain't nobody going to make me go there. How you going to have... <laughs> I ain't doing that no more. <laughs> Stokers be like, ugh, I could just, ugh, ugh. You just don't know, girl. <laughs> Really? <laughs> and you're operating in an ooh flesh. Talking about ain't no good man out here. <laughs> I ain't gonna say nothing else. Yeah. Yahweh, Yahweh's agenda is not to stop the action, but give us a share of his nature. He's not trying to get us to, to stop us from getting mad. He's trying to give us a nature that, that now walks in self-control. Amen. He said, I want you to be a partaker of my divine nature. Do you understand what that means? He says, he, he says me and you through the Spirit of God, are partakers of His divine nature. Go to first, 2 Peter 1 and 4. I'm going to show this, and I'm, and I'm closing. 2 Peter chapter 1, verse number 4, and this is the last verse, and I'm closing. 2 Peter chapter 1, verse number 4. It says here, Whereby are given unto us exceeding great and precious promises, that by these you might be what? Partakers of his divine nature. 
having escaped the corruption that is in the world. Do you know what partaker means? It means sharer. Everybody say sharer. sharer. He gave us his spirit so he could share his spirit with us. Now, if I share money with you, if I got a hundred dollars and I share with you 50 of it, whose fifty dollars is it? If I got a pizza and I share two slices of that pizza with you, whose pizza is it? He says, I want you to be a sharer of my spirit. That doesn't mean the spirit moves on us. That means he gives us a piece of his spirit as our spirit. So when I walk in peace, I'm act that's my spirit. See, God actually gives us a level of his spirit. Do you all understand that? It don't go and come because it's yours. It don't lift after you preach. After you finish speaking in tongues, it don't go no. It's yours. It's your spirit all the time. The same spirit you speak in tongues when you preach is the same spirit that's there when you disagree with your husband or your wife. Use it. Preach then. Hello? We tried to use the spirit for religion. That's your spirit. And you're grieving him. That's why you're depressed. That's why you're fighting with discouragement. Because you didn't handle that in the spirit. Somebody say, I'm a partaker of his spirit. Come on. I do, he does not give me joy at times. I have a piece of his joy. He does not give me peace at times. I got a piece of his peace. He does not just give me righteousness over sin. I got a piece of his righteousness. That's my spirit. His spirit is my spirit by way of filling of Holy Spirit. Everybody stand to your feet. Watch this. I don't want to come in here and, and feel because what the flesh does is the flesh wants to give you a nature of offense so you can't receive what you need for what you need. There's some things God wants to give you and flesh makes you defensive. Flesh makes you reactionary. Why? Because flesh don't ever want you to go in the spirit. I didn't come in here to condemn nobody. Matter of fact, I don't have the authority to do that. I, I came in here to call some people up that recognize I've been living beneath my nature. I came to call some people into the spirit that God has given them. I came to call you into a victory that already belongs to you. I came to call you from under one inferior law, the law of sin and death into a superior law called the law of the spirit of life. There's another law we can live by. There's a law that everybody does get depressed and everybody feels like quitting. Everybody has those dog days. Yeah, that's a law. But there's a superior law. The law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus. And God says tonight that I want to give you grace to mortify the deeds of your members, mortify your flesh so you can live in the measure that you've been translated to in spirit. The spirit is willing tonight to repent. The spirit is willing tonight to turn. The spirit of, is willing tonight to say, you know what? I am not where I need to be, but I'm coming. I hear you calling Jesus. And I'm coming. I'm coming back to the place you've prepared for me called spirit. Because I got some steps I need to take. And I can't take these steps in my flesh. My flesh. I'm telling you right now. You can try to start out by faith in your flesh. You're going to return to Egypt every time. Bondage that you're used to is always better 
than a promise you don't know exactly how it's going to come when you're in your flesh. I would rather have bondage I'm used to than a promise and I can't predict it. We, at least in Egypt, I know we were bound, but at least we could eat cucumbers and stuff. I ain't like it, but I knew when I was going to get paid. It wasn't enough, but I knew when it was coming. I, I, people always say, I got to move from the comfortable place. I don't even believe it's comfortable. I just believe it's familiar. You've just gotten so familiar with what's uncomfortable. Uncomfortable has gotten comfortable to you. It never was enough. And you always worried about how this is going to get done. You ain't comfortable. But it's familiar. Flesh will allow you to settle for what's familiar than live by a faith for what God wants to take you somewhere that he'll show you when you get there. But today, we're going to mortify some things and we're going to come into a place of a spirit we've never had before. We're crucifying some flesh on this altar on tonight as a family. I ain't coming up there to be spoken to my blessing. I'm coming up there with the intent. I'm coming up to this altar with the intent. I'm grabbing my, my cross. I'm taking up my cross and I'm coming to this altar and I'm killing some stuff. 